What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Kempel of Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. I feel so lucky and excited to share with you my very special guest today. He's actually a dear friend of mine, a former coworker. He is now the author. His name is R.W. Biga, the author of The Education of Adam. It is available on Amazon and it has become a very popular. So um, I know Bob, but I want Bob to tell us you guys a little bit about himself. So Bob, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience and give us a little bit about your background, and then we're going to jump into the deets on this book. Thank you, Deanna. Good to be here. Um, I actually have a background in IT. That's how I met Deanna here. Um, and I've always had a love for reading, though. And actually, in high school, I actually had one of my stories actually published. I, and to be honest with you, I can't find it. I don't know where it is now. This is when I was 17. That's cool. But I did that because I took a writing class. Sure. And, you know, I thought about it later on, 20 years, some years later, about what, you know, if I could actually do that again, but, you know, in the, in the book, in a longer length. So, you know, I decided one day, I, I had a story that actually um, had the idea for probably about 1992, that long ago. Wow. You know, I was, I was in junior high at the time. Okay. I saw it on TV. Um, just like the idea that I got. And I thought, you know, how can I write that? You know, I, I actually wrote out some of it when I was in high school, but it was only like 100 pages. And that was like written pages. And I thought to myself, well, maybe, you know, I don't know much about writing. And then sooner after that, I took that class where I had that published short story. Sure. And, and then what I did was, is, um, yeah, I just kind of just forgot about it. You know, writing became um, during college and my later years, just something that took a lot of time. But then I got into IT, you know, and I was on a computer a lot. So I had Word and everything like that, Microsoft Word. So I decided one time just to start yeah. my story. And that's really key. It's just get, the first thing is getting it started. Yeah. You know, a lot of people talk about stuff. And I think probably the hardest thing is actually getting started. Absolutely. Once you do, sorry. I said, absolutely. You're absolutely correct. It is because that's the hardest thing. And I actually know some other writer actually at my job right now who actually has been asking me about that. And, I, and all I said to encourage her is I said, please just get started or write stuff down. Even if it's your all your thoughts, just write it down. You can always, you know, in this day age of Word, Microsoft yeah. Word, you can just get rid of it in just a second. Yeah. You know, unlike the other days you typed and you had to go back. Um, so anyway, I, I got started on that and I just kept going. I would do like one or two pages a day. Wow. And that just kept going and going and going. And um, I wanted to show you something. Here. I have, this is the book that I kept my original manuscript in. I just oh, want to yeah. show everybody. Well, that's neat. I love it. Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's very thick. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, here's my lot. original manuscript. So that's, what, that's where uh, your original pages went to, huh? Correct. Yeah, that, that's where it went. And I, um, I saved it and I printed it out one day. And... Um, is 461 pages. Okay. So that's 461 pages typed at one and a half spacing. So as you know, if you look at my book, my book's about 572, not counting the intros and stuff. So as you can see, my book typing out that actually gets bigger to be more. So um, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of times I've heard people say when they're actually, you know, writing, they're like, oh, I don't think my book's long enough. You know, it's actually a very, very big, um, there's a big difference between what you actually write and what actually comes onto the book. Sure. Like this book, kind of yeah. thick, one and a half inches. Yeah. Um, so um, anyway, um, I just kept going and going and going. And I'm like, you know what? I'm actually liking this. This is therapeutic, I think. You know, it's just one of those things if you like to do it and you have an idea, you just go ahead and do it. So that, that happened and about maybe a year and a half later, I was done. So what did wow. I do next? I'm like, okay, what do I do, do next? I looked up online and I was trying to find some publishers. Sure. I submitted to one place. They accepted it right away, but they, they didn't get back to me. Like, I mean, like I said, yeah, okay. They, they gave me an offer and then I called them back and I emailed them back and they didn't get back to me. So I submitted to a second place. Second place did it too. Took them about a week because they had to look over it. And then I'm like, you know what? This place got back to me right away. They're emailing me back right away. I'm going to go with them. And that was Fulton Books. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So that's very cool. I really love all that information, but let's actually talk about the book itself. So okay. you, this, the idea came to you, you said back in college, is that what I heard or no? Recent? Uh, junior high. Oh, junior. The, the idea for the book came back. Okay. So I have not had an opportunity to read this yet, but um, a, a mutual friend of ours who we also all work together. She's been uh, a guest on my podcast as well. Her name is Jocelyn Garrett. She is a rising pop star. She just released a big video that I was in as well. Um, <laughs> but she did a great review on it. I read her notes um, that she posted. And I was like, oh, this is Awesome. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about what the the subject is about the book, you know, just the idea of it in general. Sure. Yeah, it's set in the future, the not too distant future. It's maybe about 10 years from now, okay. um, where the world is very different. Um, the country isn't like it is like we have it now, or even three years ago when I started the book or two years, two and a half years ago. Um, and basically, the, the state, meaning the government runs everything. And that includes the education of the teenagers, the people in junior high. So they run everything so they can pretty much indoctrinate people. So that's what kind of like this story alludes to, although without giving a lot of way, a lot of way on this book, the education actually kind of has a double meaning, which I'm not going to give away okay. in the book. There's actually um, like a double meaning on what it actually is. Okay. So without so that's, which- that's, that's why the title, because it, it, it means a couple different things. So, Correct, and that's, I love and that. that's, that's very that's very um, that's very witty. It was trying to. I mean, and, and that's another thing about these books is when I when I first came up with the idea with the book, you know, in high school, I had the idea of how the beginning was and how the end was kind of going to be. Uh, the only thing that's interesting, or one of the things that's interesting, is you go and you. When I think about what my original idea was, it changes as you go along. Right. New things come up, right. and you do that. And, and that's why I only would do like one or two pages a day because I would want to give my best work for every day and not just write to write. Sure. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I think that's what a lot of writers should do. You know, you can always go back and like I said, and get rid of the stuff or bad stuff or, you know, whatever. So it's almost like a living, breathing thing. So it's like, it is an organic um, uh, growing, almost like an organism that, you, that, you're, that you're putting effort into. So it just comes very natural. I mean, that, I mean that's, at least that's what I'm hearing. Exactly. That, that is correct. Yes. You know, you put into it, you put part of yourself into it, your experiences, how you are with other people, and you make it in a fictional setting. Um, you know, and you, you learn from how people react and how, how you've seen people react, uh, like on the news or whatever. Yeah. And the like. Um, and then you just, you know, put it how your thoughts are. You know, it's, it's kind of like a thoughts of how the world is or how the world could be. You know, in this case, in this case, you hope it's not ever going to be this way. But you know, it's just, um, like I said, it, it's, and I like to be creative. So actually being able to do that, like I said, is therapeutic. Yeah. You know, and now that it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I said, yeah, I would, I could imagine that being very therapeutic. I used to write a lot in high school and, you know, I have written here and there like sporadically over the years, but not like a, um, a novel, more like poems, like short stories, you know, like just a burst of creativity. Um, I, I found as I've gotten older, my cre creativity has turned into something else. <laughs> like, you know, the fashion designing, which you supported me on greatly. You know, I'll never, I mean, you were so great in, in my endeavors when uh, I worked at, at Stereo Cycle. So um, I'm very excited for you and the direction that this book is gonna go. So now, now that you have published one book, what happens next? Do you, do they wait to see the success of this? And then do you have the option to do another book? I have, um, I've talked to the company and what, what they say is, um, cause it takes a little money to get published because they have to do like the artwork. I'm no artist by any means. I'm not very good at that, the art aspect of it. So they did that. They did all the editing. Um, uh, you know, what probably is going to be next is, is I'm going to see what happens with this. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a second book that yeah. I'm writing right now. Okay. I'm probably on like the 300th page in the equivalent in the book equivalent, 240 pages. Okay. Right um, that's going to be it's completely separate. It's not a sequel or anything, but that's probably what's next. I'm going to see if the company likes it. Um, Fulton Publishing. Yeah. If they do, then I'm probably going to go along with that. Then I'm I'm going to see what happens with that. Now, one thing though, I will bring up about um, and this is important for anybody that wants to write is in this day and age if you know there's two ways you can pretty much or three ways there's audiobooks you can use yeah. which i don't have there's the kindle digital way which i will have in about three or four weeks god for um, god willing 
Yeah. Um, and then there's obviously the, the regular book. Um, what I wanted to point out was, is when you make these books, sometimes it's better to make them a little smaller or okay. split them up. But in this case, I felt like I had to make it in one book because this is one book you got to have everything in at once. Yeah. But the reason I bring that up though is because my next book is probably only going to be, I'd say probably about 350 pages. Okay. Wow. All right. So who, I, I just thought the title is really interesting when I saw you, you put it out there on social media. Why Adam? Why did you use Adam? as the, it's So that that's the main character? Correct. It, okay. It's um, The thing about Adam is, I guess it was probably just like one of those names. It's always out there. It's never, at least recently, the most popular name, but it's not, it never goes away. It's, sure. you know, it's, it's um, just something I just, I guess I just thought of one time. I, I literally, what I do is I go take a piece of paper right before I start and I write down a lot of the characters' names, you know, some really? of their traits and stuff like that. That um, is cool. I like that process. That's very interesting. Would you recommend that? I would still you have the original spiral right here with all the <laughs> stuff here. That's uh, fantastic. You can't see it, but these are literally all the characters and all of my notes that I have. Yeah. You know, I put what room they were in, what their last name is, you know, who the, you know, um, who the adults yeah, are in the so book. For the audio audience that can't see it, you can always go to my YouTube channel and watch this. He actually has a spiral pad where he has written all, out names and the, of the characters and stuff like that, which I think that is a, a, actually a great way to get yourself organized and have your thoughts together. So as you start writing, you kind of know the direction that you're going with the people, like the, the characters that you're going to have. That is awesome. I really like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it works well for me because, I, like I said, if I can see it, then I also, you know, if somebody leaves the story or is no longer going to be in the story, then I'll check them off. And I'm like, you know what? Don't write about them anymore. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um, you know, and put them in groups. Who's going to be this group? Who's going to be that group? You know, yeah. heroes, villains, neutral, whatever. Um, and that's what I did. And um, that's just how I am with stuff. Though. Um, some people may keep it all in their mind. I like to write it all down. Uh, that's fantastic. Do you, can you share with us what the next book is going to be about? Or don't you know yet? Well, it's the next book is, hmm, let's just put it this way. I don't want to tell what happens, but basically there's going to be some teens in it again. Okay. Um, and um, they decide to go on a journey, but the problem is, is something happens while they're on that journey. So pretty much they have to figure out how, what they're going to do because of what happens without giving it away. Sure. So, and it, again, it's, it's with more, more details, it'll probably make it sound more interesting, but I mean, I'm just giving the basic gist of it because um, it's something that uh, I remember getting an idea actually earlier than this book. Really? About a very vague um, journey or a, a vague story about this journey. Um, it, it's, I, I, I remember think a lot of things, um, like that. And I remember exactly where I actually got this idea. Yeah. It was actually around Halloween of 1990. <laughs> wow. I would not even remember like, no, I would have no clue. <laughs> well, it, it was, um, there's this, there's this movie called Halloween three. Um, okay. Some people are familiar with it. Now it's not a, like Halloween three, but I remember seeing the cover of it and thinking a certain thing. I remember exactly what I was thinking. Um, and when I saw that, you know, I thought years later, I'm like, you know what? I remember thinking about that and how that would be a good story. So that's what I did. Um, I wish I could tell you more, but um, once I do actually get it published or accepted, I will be able to tell you more. about it. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I just love to hear your process. I think that being a writer, you have to have, you know, I mean, you have to have like almost unli unlimited creativity and let your brain go where it needs to go, but also patience. I have zero patience. I would not be a good writer because I'd be like, damn, I want this done right now. <laughs> I, I actually feel like this, but the, the thing about it is, is I, I realized that, you know what, your best work is never rushed. You have to just, at least in writing, you know, you have to get it right. You know, it's better not just to like some writers nowadays, they will literally just put anything out because they just sell. I'm, yeah. I'm like some writers, I mean, um, because they have like book clubs and stuff like that. I feel that I would actually like to put something that's part of me that's actually, you know, I'd be proud to. You sure. know, be able to show somebody. Sure. Um, and that's why you, you should never rush. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Stephen King, pretty much everybody knows who he is. I believe he only writes about four or five pages a day, you know, and he's a master at that. Sure. Um, just as an example, at least if, if I remember correctly, that's what he said. You know, he spends a certain amount of days. Now, granted, he doesn't have to work a full-time job like I do, right. but he'll do something like he will 
spend, I believe he said four hours researching and four hours writing every day. Wow. So I, I kind of took that to heart. Me, it's kind of like maybe a half hour <laughs> researching and maybe an hour writing every day. Um, so that's just something that to, um, you know, to think about, because if you have a full-time job or whatever, you can only do so much. And um, I also find though, like I said, if I give myself that certain amount of time that I will not be, I will probably have my best work. Like I said, I will just, you know, um, not try to rush anything. You know, if, even if I get a half a page done, it's still success, you know, get right. something done each day. If you can maybe take the weekends off, yeah. usually, you know, um, on the weekends, sometimes I don't feel like doing it, but again, don't like stop. Just keep. I feel going. like you have to, if you're, since you're, you know, as a dynamic individual that's living, you know, I, when I saw that you were doing this, I'm like, Oh, I can't wait. I got to get him on my podcast because there's so many people that have dreams and they have goals that they want to do and they, and they leave it just as that they don't actually pursue it. So you've, you've actually accomplished it. And so when you are juggling, like I juggle, you know, me, since you've met me, I'm always juggling a lot. You have got to compartmentalize and organize how you're going to juggle those things, or it's just going to be one big hot mess. So, you know, I totally agree with that method methodology that you do have to say, okay, I have my full time job, and then I'm going to break up this amount of time to commit to do getting this done. Because if I don't, I will never get it done. And you, you know, so you found a means to an end, and you made that happen. So that's just, yay! It's just amazing. <laughs> But um, so how can people support you and how can they find your book and, and all those good things, Bob? My book is, um, it's currently on Amazon. It's on Amazon only for the, um, for the paperback. Um, some people ask me about hardcover books. Usually hardcover books do not come out until the book has sold a certain amount because they're more expensive. Sure. They're usually like eight to $10 more. Right. Um, so usually that's what they do. So if it becomes more popular or popular enough, Hardcover, that'd be it's great. It's going to be very popular when when it becomes very popular. Then you might have that option because don't don't mess up my my buddy Bobby here because he's <laughs> uh, pretty good, pretty good. But um, Bobby, what else would you? Is there any like parting words, any words of wisdom aside from all that you shared that you'd like to? If there's if any of my audience out there is looking to write a book, you've been thinking about that for a while. Is there anything that you'd like to to any to share with them to get them on that path? Yeah, I mean, there's, there, are, there are multiple steps you can do. The first thing is, like I said, if you don't get accepted right away, um, keep going. I, I believe that another example of Stephen King, I think he had like 50. His first, his first big book was Carrie off of the, the I don't know if you remember the movie Carrie, yeah. which sold 4 million copies. Holy and, God. Um, yeah, that's what it said on his, actually on the book I have of his. But what I was, it, um, it may have been more by now. Um, but what I, my point was is, like I said, um, a little story with him, just to give you an example, don't get discouraged, because first of all, what happened was, is, you know, he was, he wrote the book, and he thought it was, when he looked over, he's like, this is garbage, and he threw it out in the, in the wastebasket, and what happened was his wife actually took it out of the wastebasket and say, no, keep submitting it. Yeah. And That's she awesome. did, and like a year later, I think he made two, three million dollars in revenue, and that was back in the 70s. Sure. So See? that's one thing, don't give up on that. Um, have some steps though, because there are um, certain ways to do it. Like once it gets accepted, it it's still going to probably be a long process. It's probably going to be at least six months. Wow. Mine got accepted in March, for example. Yeah, um, but before all this craziness happened. <laughs> correct. COVID. I mean, maybe if there was no COVID, it'll take a little less time. But sure. still, I probably went through four rounds of editing because I had to have a professional editor go through the whole book and find all the little, you know, mistakes, mostly, you know, like commas, periods, sometimes, you know, use a better word here. They don't change the story at all, though. A, um, an editor should never ask you to change a story, only change maybe a possible word and some kinds of uh, punctuation. That's a so, good, those are good words of advice. I wouldn't have yeah, known. I mean, that's ne never let, if somebody wants to change your story, then I don't think they're the one for you because, right. you know, that's just not, it should be your own thing. Um, and then you have to go through things like the book design. Um, you have to go through the book design, which is the next step after the editing. And that's really pretty quick. You just have an idea of what you want to do. Yeah, I really I like the cover, actually. It's very intriguing because I, <laughs> I like the gun. I like the bullets. And I mean, I, I, I like it. Well, that's the funny thing is I took a picture. That desk on there is actually my desk. Wow, get out. Because, well, no, what, what happened was is I, I sent them a picture and I made some folders saying oh, like, cool. you know, it's going to be laid out like this. And because I still have the folders. Yeah. Um, 
And then I said, you know, I want, you know, a revolver on here. I, I, um, I want the keys there because there were originally keys. I, I don't have the picture with me right now, but if you saw the original picture, you'd laugh at what it was compared to that. But um, just, you know, have an idea of what you want for your um, cover because the cover is one of probably like the top five key things. Because Absolutely. I if you see that, that from afar, you're going to look at it and you're like, wait, you know, I see something on there, you know, yeah. maybe I should you know, take a closer look. And then you have the back cover. You know, which looks kind of ominous and spooky, and then the it back does of actually. I didn't really pay attention to that because I just got it last night. I wanted to mm -hmm. read some of it before we did this, but um, it didn't. You know, I got it last night, but I will definitely be reading it and sharing my review and all that good stuff. But um, Bob, thank you so much for mm -hmm. joining me. We're gonna have to do a follow up on and to okay. check in to see how things are going on your second book. I wish you much success. Bob is an awesome individual. He is very kind. He is always like willing to help his friends and, and just as, um, he's just an, an awesome human being. And you, you know, it's, we don't come across too many awesome people these days. I feel like, I feel like people have lost their minds. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but in all seriousness, no, please go and check the links in the, in the uh, description of this episode to find out where you can purchase Bob's book on Amazon. You, I will send you straight there. And, you know, we got to support our fellow entrepreneurs slash artists, uh, creatives, all those good things. Um, and, um, Again, Bob, thank you so much. You guys, this is your host. Got one more thing? Go ahead. I was just going to say one more thing because one thing that I'm noticing is, um, is like I said, you, you can, through a book company, usually you can get it on Amazon. But also, that's only, I believe, 30 to 40% of the market from what I understand I read. Oh. So also go to places like, like just today, I'm going to be emailing Barnes and Nobles about it because they're, you know, a big chunk of sure. chain bookstores, yeah. you know, half price books. Go to those places and see if you can you know, maybe break a deal with them for they can get it. Also, a lot of times the companies you'll have, like for instance, you can buy in bulk and you'll get it for a cheaper price since you buy it in bulk and then you can give them to people individually or you can have, you can have giveaways and stuff like that, you know. There you go. Um, and also, um, from also what I've read, um, Kindles are also a big part of the market and Kindles are usually always cheaper. They're usually about no more than $10. Sure, because it's all um, electronic, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the thing. The big thing about books is, is about of that, you know, $23, probably a third is at least just the printing because yeah. you want to put it on good paper. If you look at the paper, it's yeah. um, kind of like a, a cream manila looking color. No, you know, I noticed that. Yeah. I do notice yeah, that. It, it's, you know, it's, you know, sometimes you want to try for both, you know, cause it's both. There's a lot of money to be made. And then there's audio books too, which yeah. hopefully in the future I can have an audio book. Awesome. Well, fingers crossed that that happens. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Kempel of Label Free Podcast to live your best life. You must live label free. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And I will be back with more dynamic guests very soon.